We are here at Revolution by Amarsis in London, and I am here today with Maria Flores Portillo from Persado. Maria, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's great. So fantastic. So thanks for taking the time to be on the show because I know that you were actually presenting just this morning. Mm -hmm. So for anyone who may not be as aware, as aware as they should be about Persado, what would you tell them about the company? In a nutshell, what we do is we use um, artificial intelligence to come up with the best possible marketing creative for any channel. Um, and we do that really, really well. Uh, we're a bit less known in, in Europe because uh, we've been here only for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But we're actually around six years old, uh, and we work with a number of super, super large brands like Gap or Microsoft and others. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and, and this is what we've been uh, talking about this morning. Sounds great. So tell me a little bit about your thoughts at Revolution. I think it's been a great conference. Um, I think the content has been of superb quality. Everyone is still raving about the Joe Malone talk. Right. Uh, but also many, many others. I think you've got a really great balance of sort of like breakout sessions and good content, but also tons of space for marketers to talk to each other, which is what you sometimes miss in this kind of events, yes. So we think it's been great. Um, first of all, as a conference, it's been a great balance between sort of like, you know, high quality content, everyone really raving about Joe Malone and a few other talks, uh, but also giving space to marketers to talk to each other. As an organizer, I felt that the, the organization was impeccable. Uh, the team was really, really impressed, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you for, <laughs> for being here and, and for that. Um, it, yeah, definitely the opportunity to build those relationships and talk to each other as marketers is, is, a, is hugely important. So but I know that you actually presented this morning, mm -hmm. and so I'm interested to hear a little bit more about what you shared with the audience and what we can share with our audience here today. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about how artificial intelligence can help creative people be more creative, right? So a lot of the technology um, has focused so far on the targeting side of things. So trying to get to the right person at the right time with the right product. And that's something that Amarsis and some of your partners do wonderfully well. Um, we're here to kind of like take care of the other side of the equation. So use technology to produce um, creative material, to produce marketing copy that is going to perform better and resonate really, really well with your audience. I love that, using technology to help creative people be more creative. Yeah. And we talk a lot about that too at Amarsis, where it's you implement technology specifically, you know, when it comes to machine learning or AI, mm -hmm. it's not in lieu of, instead of creativity, but it's actually so that the human side of things can be more human. So tell me more about what that looks like to you and, and maybe even some of what you got into this morning on that note that it really is about that, that um, intersection between the marketer and the machine, the human elements and, and the creative side along with the technology. I think where technology is going is first and foremost to try to automate some of the more repetitive tasks or the more sort of like, you know, data heavy tasks that marketeers are doing today. I don't think anyone particularly enjoys going through sort of like, you know, lines of Excel and, and taking care of that, right? So that's the first thing. It's about bringing efficiency to some of that, of that process. And that should hopefully free up time to, for marketeers to be able to be creative, to be able to take a step back and get off their day to day and their routine and come up with, with new things that could bring new types of relationships between the brand and the customers. So that's the first thing, it's about making things better in a way. But what gets me quite excited about technology and about AI in particular is about the ability of AI to also make better things. Mm -hmm. So to also come up with conclusions that us as humans would not be able to come up with. Right. Um, and almost kind of you know, finding those curve balls that, that would be difficult. So be more of a creative ally, not just um, someone to take care of the dirty work, so to speak, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So give me some examples, if you can, about what that's looking like for you, for you and your clients and, and how that's evolved over there. You said you've been in business for six years. I'm sure that that's changed a lot, right? Yeah, no, it has changed a lot. Um, and I think one of the things that has changed a lot is the amount of data that is available out there to be able to understand what people resonate with, right? Um, which is part of the job that we've been doing, right? You know, collect all of this knowledge on the emotions that people respond to, on the kind of benefits that they like, and so on and so on. Um, what we have seen, it's kind of like the journey that some of our clients have taken is in the beginning, when, when they heard about AI, they were very skeptical. Like we got a lot of sort of like eye rolling, like the new thing. Yeah, it's a buzzword. Um, but once you get into a very actionable use case and they understand what it is and they understand it's not so painful, um, they have really embraced it, right? So, you know, from 
using our technology for a few marketing campaigns to actually allowing our technology to create their entire marketing program mm -hmm. when it comes to content. And we have the brands like you know, The Gap or, or Expedia doing that with us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so much hype mm. when it comes to AI. Yes. There's so much. And so when it comes to actually giving marketers something that they can, they can see and that's tangible and that they can really understand what it could do for them and for their businesses and for their, their customers and clients, it really changes things. Right? It does. It, it does. does. Certainly. So tell me a little bit more about um, what it is that in action, some of the tangible things that you're doing with your clients? I mean, essentially what we do is we, we understand what people, what makes people tick mm -hmm. when it comes to communication, um, and we use that to generate marketing copy, right? So we do tons of different campaigns with them, you know, so from sort of like acquisition to campaigns for existing clients to modifying the website. Sometimes we give their agencies advice on how to run a radio ad because we know, for instance, that a particular motion is better performing in the Seattle area in the U.S. or kind of like North England, right? So um, those are the things that you can do today with technology. You can go a lot deeper into what matters to people when it comes to communication as opposed to having a blanket approach. Yeah, just to be yeah. that much more effective. Exactly. Using, applying yes. data to just be that much more relevant, that much more meaningful to the people who are going to experience that content. Yeah, right? exactly. And there's two tangible effects for that. One is much higher performance. So in average, um, they can generate around 41% additional sales if they use our technology as opposed to using what you know, the copywriting team would create without us. Um, and the other very tangible asset is an understanding of what's making people resonate, right? So we have some cases like sometimes we work with credit card companies or with sort of like airlines and they have decided to announce really hard that, you know, they would get 40,000 additional air miles mm -hmm. uh, if they apply for a credit card. And we can actually prove that people do not respond to that that they would respond to another benefit or that they would respond to a different type of emotion. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of sort of like partnerships and product and, and offer decisions that can get taken on the back of data. Yeah. And that's what we're here to provide. Yeah, and so it's it's interesting because a lot I think a lot of marketers are still kind of afraid because there's so much unknown about AI. Yes. But really when applied in this kind of way, it's it's so much more helpful. It's like that that information that's missing because you're just trusting your gut otherwise. Exactly. exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. So. And part of what I talked this morning about was how humans have a lot of bias, a lot of ego, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of laziness, frankly, uh, yeah. when it comes to some of, you know, some of the parts of that process, at least. So if you can have machines helping you with that, um, kind of like your boundaries get really yeah. blown up. Yeah, absolutely. So what would you say to a marketer that's feeling either skeptical or afraid or just uncertain about AI? I think the first thing is to demystify AI because when people think about AI, they can think of 100,000 different things like, you know, Terminator and all of these or these robots are coming to pick our jobs. Um, I think the first thing that I would say is kind of like, you know, get, get educated and there's lots of people there that could tell you what it is and what it is not. Mm -hmm. AI really machine learning is, has been here for a long time yeah. and it's really just a way to perform, to process data in, in a much smarter manner, right? Yeah. So once you get past the myth, um, the second thing that I would say is try to understand a good use case for you because AI could be applied literally across any part of the marketing process. But if there's one particular problem that you're trying to resolve, chances are there's something out there that is using some of these technologies that could be super, super effective for you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, one thing that we always talk about with our guests when they're on the show is yeah. the future of marketing, which AI is, as you just mentioned, not Probably something new, yeah, but, that would be my pick, but yeah. it's definitely <laughs> part of the future. So what's something that you see headed our way as marketers um, that either excites you or maybe even concerns you? I think I would probably stay there, kind of like on that topic, simply because it, I think it's going to be transformational, mm -hmm. not only for marketers, but for us as kind of like, you know, a civilization. Um, the, the bit that concerns me is, is with anything that has been super, super hyped, it could be, it could be deemed the new silver bullet for some right. things. And actually, again, it's just a way to process data. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the interesting part of, of AI is how how that data can be processed, hopefully in an unbiased way, right? Um, but it's definitely a danger that they could be biased. We've also heard horrible stories about yeah. some of the big giants, you know, putting bias in their algorithms and then, you know, hitting the headlines. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the thing that concerns me is potentially kind of like the advantage that some of the giants have because of their access to data, right? Um, so that's what, you know, some, some companies such as ourselves, but many others are trying to, to help also smaller companies access AI in a much, 
in a much more reasonable way without having to have tons of data and actually leveraging our, our own, right? Yeah. Um, and outside of that, you know, AI as a, as a category, I think should be regulated and policed, right? <laughs> because absolutely. it's super exciting for us, but, yeah. but it could also be misused, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so thank you for all of your insights. But before we let you go, how are you feeling about maybe doing some rapid fire questions? Okay, let's go for it. It'll be more fun than it will be painful. So okay. first and foremost, what one word would you use to describe marketing today? Disjointed. Mm. Ah. Yeah. How yeah. about um, something that you wish marketers knew, but you're pretty sure they don't? I would say personalization should not be an objective, just a tool. People deal differently with the same level of intimacy, and I think it just become one of those mountains that people try to climb, but they mm -hmm. tend to lose perspective. Hmm. Very yeah. interesting, very interesting. And how about some content that you've consumed recently? A book, podcast, newsletter, uh, blog that you really like that you think our audience would benefit from? I'm a podcast person. Um, Me too. <laughs> so I would actually recommend, uh, he's a friend of mine, Tom Allerton. Um, he used to run innovation for, a, for an agency here. And he runs a podcast called The Shiny New Object, uh, which is fantastic. He brings amazing guests, and they do talk about marketing and, and life and, and so on. So it's, it's great for a morning run. Um, beyond that, on kind of like because we've been dominating this with AI, I would say Life 3.0 is a fantastic book if anyone is actually interested in the topic. Yeah. Um, it definitely demystifies a lot of what's out there, mm -hmm. and it has a very so like. Um, enthusiast approach to, to that world, which I think is necessary. That is good. That is yeah. necessary yeah. these days, for sure. So, well, with that, um, one last thing before I let you go is where can our audience find you and more information about Persado? Yeah, so persado.com, obviously. Uh, you can go to our website and, and check us out. Uh, myself, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I have a weird surname, so I'm sure you will find me. There's not many of us. Uh, or kind of like, you know, in terms of conferences across London. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Maria. Thank you for being here at Revolution. Thank, thank you for you. being here on Marketer Machine. And just thank you for sharing your insights. No, thank you. And have a great show.